Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All of today's guests on this uh, Thursday, rainy, rainy Thursday, including Farhan, are brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Connor Bedard makes one more visit to the LEC for the CHL Top Prospects game January uh, 25th. Alvin and Rutherford will be there scouting. The only <laughs> way into the sold-out game is by purchasing the Top Prospects pack which starts at $99. It includes the top prospects game as well as three other Giants games, Feb 1 versus Prince Albert, February 24th versus Prince George, and March 3rd versus Victoria, home of Czech. These packages can only be purchased by calling 604 giants That's 604 444 2687 little Moses Malone for you. Yeah, remember him. On this... Uh, Thursday. Power. Okay, Farhan's going to join us in a second. First of all, let's show this Farhan Lalji tweet from yesterday. Nathan Rourke's workout tour concluded today. That would be Wednesday in Cleveland. He visited, that might be a good fit. Oh. He visited 12 teams. A majority have made offers, several with meaningful guarantees. Rourke has been in regular contract with the BC Lions throughout the process. Decision imminent. I expect by the weekend. And we're going to talk to Farhan about the Canucks, of course, and what's happening with uh, Oliver ekman Larson in, in a bit. But first, we'll focus on the British Columbia Lions, Nathan Rourke, and what's happening for him down in the National Football League. NFL playoffs coming up uh, in, in a bit. Farhan Lalji joining us now from TSN. Sir, thanks for doing this. How are you? Good. Always good to talk to you guys, especially in January. You know, everything's fresh. We've got optimism for the year. Yeah. Uh, opti optimism for every everybody but the local hockey team. Hey, uh, yeah, well, we'll get well, to, that. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, Farhan. But uh, we just saw your tweet from yesterday. Excellent job on Nathan Work. What's the latest? Well, the latest is just that: no more workouts and a decision pretty soon here. And um, you know, there there are a number of teams that uh, have expressed a lot of interest, and in, and many of them kind of have varying fits. Right? It's a real difficult needle to thread given the priorities for Nathan. Number one, he wants to play. Now, I think he understands he can't walk into a starting job. This isn't 40 years ago where Warren Moon could command it and a number of teams wanted to bring him in as a starter. That's not how the league works anymore. But, you know, he wants a, a, a real path to a number two situation. And, you know, so you, you don't just get that in the form of a, a verbal indication or promise. You, you also get some of that in terms of commitment in the form of guarantees. And there's been some of that offered to him. But, you know, what, what else surrounds those situations you want a level of stability right you don't want to be in a situation where there's a, a coaching or management change imminent right so like i'll give you an example the arizona cardinals and you say what you want about kyler murray but they've just had a coaching change and, and the managers get changed as well so whoever's evaluated him and whoever's potentially going to sign him if that's where he goes which i don't think he is that entire management team is going to change in weeks so then what? Like, they have no idea who you are, nor do they care who you are, right? So it's a real difficult needle to thread because, you know, you, you know, if the team is that bad, they're volatile, they're probably going to draft a guy in the first round. Some teams make a little more sense than others. So he's got a tough decision ahead of him. And, and the Lions, quite frankly, aren't completely out of it. I think yeah. it's a real, real long shot uh, that he signs in BC. But it's we're not talking about lottery odds now because – you get great opportunities and everything sounds good, but then you still got to put pen to paper and change of heart could be there. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, 12 teams he's worked out for the Browns, the Deshaun Watson situation there. Who knows that could, that could work out Buccaneers, Raiders, uh, Colts, uh, which team you just use the phrase make, make sense, which teams make the most sense in your opinion for Nathan? Well, as far as those variables are concerned, and again, I haven't seen the contract, so I've, I've tweeted out three teams that I think are really good fits, but I don't know if they've offered them guarantees or anything like that, right? One of them is um, the uh, Minnesota Vikings. The other one's the New York Giants, and one is Tampa Bay. And I say all of that because they're mid-level starter players, right? Like, uh, And when I say mid-level with Brady, obviously he's an elite player, but he's old, right? That's not yeah. going to last forever. Um, and then you've got, uh, you've got Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins, who are mid-level guys, right? And, you know, will those teams potentially commit to them for a little bit longer? Maybe, but not to the point where they're going to be completely bogged down by a contract at this stage. So you could potentially go there, be a backup, but 
that quarterback maybe falters a little bit and you get a chance to make an impression, you know, and you go in there and you do some things and there's stable coaching and front office situations, right? So I like those those three. Uh, just And again, those are my preferences and my opinion only. But I do know there's a few other teams that have shown strong, strong interest. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars are one of them, right? I know uh, Rick and I have, have had a conversation about that, and, and I know he's aware of that as well, uh, the Jags. Uh, but, you know, you've got a young star, right? So another one that I know is really interested is Cincy. Now, if you're, if you're Kansas City, Cincinnati, and Jacksonville, who he's worked out for, You've got elite quarterbacks because, you know, Trevor Lawrence is headed into that category that Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes are in now, and all those guys are young. So do you want to go into one of those situations where you might get a clear path to a number two for sure? Good coaching and stability around you, but now you're completely dependent on the injury of a superstar player to get you on the field in a couple of years, right? So you want to go down that road? Maybe the other things are important enough that, yeah, you're willing to do that, right? Uh, for a number two job. So, uh, again, every situation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, Farhan, I do want to say, uh, a BC Lions source told me last night, they feel they're still, uh, they got a chance, uh, and they're not 100% mm-hmm. out of it. And also, I was told this morning, the Lions uh, are in waiting mode. So, uh, what could the Lions do? I know everyone thinks he's going to the NFL, but what could the Lions do here in the 11th hour to change Rourke and his agent's mind? Nothing. And I say that because I don't think this is going to be a financial decision. So the Lions are certainly, uh, if they haven't already, and I think they have, they've offered him a top of market deal, right? And top of market is in the 600,000 range, maybe a little bit south of that. But, you know, it's not a money thing because if he signs even an NFL minimum um, and he makes the team, right? Like, number one, the, the guarantees he's going to get, even at the top end, are going to be like, in the 200,000s range, right? Those would be the top ends of what a guarantee could potentially look like. Um, and, and that's just from knowing the situation before, not from from insider knowledge or anything like that. But again, that's a significant number, and whatever the lines offer will be above that, right? Because you can say a minimum 705,000 per year in U.S. funds is more than what the lines could offer. Sure, but in terms of a guarantee, the lines can offer more. But it's really not going to be about that. And here's the biggest reason. The CFL and the lines will always be there. So if Nathan Rourke goes to the NFL and he, you know, makes the team and is a backup for a year and then he's a backup for a second year and doesn't see a light at the end of the tunnel to actually getting to play and decides, okay, I've had enough of this and I want to go back and actually play, the Lions and the CFL will again welcome him back with a top of market deal. So, you know, I'm sure people have tried to make the case that, hey, come back and do a full season and and let's win an MOP and a great cup and that'll be enough to get you an even bigger deal. I'm not convinced it'll get him a bigger deal. I don't know that there's anything the CFL can do to put him in a better negotiating situation next year. And a dozen teams that brought him in and more than wanted to. So, you know, I, I don't think that that part is realistic, but ultimately, where's his heart if if there isn't a team that has all those right fits there, and at the end of the day, he just can't put pen to paper, um, then the Lions have a chance. So they, they do have a chance. I just think it's kind of beyond what they can do at the point at yeah. this point. So, you know, it's not 99.99999% that he signs in the NFL. It's probably about 90, maybe 95. Uh, so better than lottery odds, but I don't think there's anything the Lions can do at this point. They do have a shot. It's small, but it would require at this point a change of heart from Nathan just philosophically about going and what's around him and what the opportunities are. And very quickly uh, for him, before we get to the Canucks, Seahawks didn't work him out, right? Yeah, and to be truthful, I would I thought the Seahawks would have been a perfect fit. Geno's yeah. done enough for a little bit more, right? And they, they were interested, but not interested enough for Rourke and his team to go down and, and make that. I mean, 12 other teams were more interested than the Seahawks. Yeah, it seemed like a, a gimme, but uh, I guess yeah. not. Okay, uh, news. I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Farhan. Uh, from Canuck land today, getting ready for tonight's game at Tampa Bay. Looks like OEL is going to be a healthy scratch. Your reaction. Minus five, last two games. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm surprised they went there. Um, does his play warrant it? Probably, right? Probably. And there are, there are players that... Uh, that are on the fringes. Like every time Kyle Burroughs plays, he plays really well, right? Mm-hmm. And do I think that the best of Kyle Burroughs is better than uh, the best of Oliver Ekman Larson? No, but right now what we're seeing is, is a little better. And, and I, you know, I'm not sure that's the roster decision, but the point I'm trying to make is Oliver Ekman Larson's had a really tough season. And it is a really, really difficult thing for a coach 
to make that decision. Now, coaches have very few cards they can play. And if you're Bruce Boudreau and you pretty much know you're not going to be back next season, you have even fewer cards that you can play. But he's not thinking long-term. You know, the contract's immovable. So it's not like, you know, he's further diminishing Oliver ekman Larson's value because as far as the trade is concerned, he has no value. You know what I mean? Like, he's locked in. He's got the he's got the movement protection. And even if he decided to wave, like, who wants that contract? And that's not a shot on the person because Oliver ekman Larson's a classy guy. And you hope it turns out well for him. But, you know, if you're Bruce Boudreaux, there's, there's, you're trying to do something to get everybody's attention. We've seen it with lesser players earlier this year. And if you're management, you probably aren't completely bent out of shape because you know you can't move this guy at this point. So you're not hurting the asset from that perspective. Before we let you go, Farhan, you were down in Los Angeles for the national title game. And you told us uh, in no uncertain terms, no question about it, Georgia was going to steamroll a TCU. Boy, you must have been really worried as that game <laughs> rolled along that maybe TCU would make you wrong. It was only, what, a 58-point difference? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and you don't see games that one-sided. And I just – I thought Georgia was better. I thought they were going to cover. I didn't think that they would basically hit the over by themselves. Um, <laughs> and usually what happens in the playoff is that – the semifinals are the blowouts, and the final is yeah. epic. And this year was the opposite because both semifinals were incredible football games. But, you know, when you saw how TCU beat Michigan, you knew that Michigan was a little overrated. They did dumb things that didn't help themselves. So as good as TCU played, they needed help. Georgia wasn't going to give them that help. And Georgia just peaked at the right time. They know how to navigate these playoffs. And, you know, and they've got big-time talent, five stars across the board, stars matter, and – um, they are the gold standard. It's the best program ahead of Alabama right now in all of college football. So surprised it was that one-sided, but probably a little bit indicative of the other semifinal and how both teams may have been a little bit inflated with what they did to get to that point. Well, you did a great job covering it. That's why you're here. You can talk hockey. You can talk football. You can talk everything. Farhan, we'll talk to you next week. Hey, right. and one other thing. Yes. There is another way to get into that uh, top prospects game. Say you know Rick Dollywall. Okay, that's well, enough. That, that's the, the owners. The yeah. owners' suite. The owners' suite. The owners. There's only the one media right guy there. that gets in the owners' suite. Uh, yeah. Okay. Say you know Rick. Say no. you know Rick. And by the way, nice choice of t-shirt color the other day, my friend. Which one was that? You guys had the same. The yellow one. Oh, the yeah. yellow, mellow yellow. yellow. It's a great song. Mellow, mellow is yellow. it mellow yellow? Yeah, by Donovan. But he's talking yeah. about the golf yeah, show. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Yellow's a beautiful hey, color. Man, you're on social media all the time. You didn't see uh, that? I, I, I don't pay attention. People are having fun you, with it. You comment, stop it. You commented on it. I never, uh, I'm never <laughs> on. I <doesn't> remember. <laughs> I hate Twitter. Thanks for this, Farhan. <laughs> see you, fellas. Okay.